طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم today we are going to talk about a very important topic uh, not only for pediatric surgery but for uh, medical uh, students and resident uh, covering EMS and family uh, family care now uh, the topic will be about inguinal and scrotal swelling and acute scrotal uh, differential diagnosis of uh, of inguinal swelling that include inguinal hernia hydrocele and descended testis and inguinal lymphadenitis I won't cover the inguinal lymphadenitis because that can be covered elsewhere uh, but I will cover the other three it's a picture of a child newborn with an inguinal scrotal swelling the swelling start in the inguinal area and descend all the way to the scrotum differential diagnosis is is inguinal hernia what is inguinal hernia? Inguinal hernia, the patient has uh, abnormal communication between the abdominal cavity and the inguinal and the scrotal area. It's actually patent process vaginalis, as you can see here. The peritoneum has uh, this finger-like projection into the inguinal and the scrotal area. Uh, normally, this uh, finger projection should close after uh, birth, after complete descent of the testis in boys or after birth in, in girls but sometimes it doesn't this opening uh, will work as an inguinal hernia where the bowel and other intraabdominal content can descend and cause uh, inguinal hernia uh, symptoms inguinal hernia or inguinal swelling can be classified into inguinal hernias which is above the inguinal ligament or femoral hernia that happens below the femoral ligament uh, inguinal ligament uh, the inguinal hernia can be direct and indirect. Pediatric, almost always uh, indirect inguinal hernia, but we see few direct and few inguinal uh, femoral hernias. Uh, how to uh, differentiate between the three? Uh, the direct hernia is medial to the inferior epigastric uh, vessel, that uh, has, uh, which is the lateral boundary of the Hasselbeck triangle. This is the Hasselbeck triangle composed by the inguinal ligament inferiorly, the recta, lateral edge of the rectus sheet medially, the pubic tubercle, and the inferior epigastric vessel. Um, hernia within this triangle called direct inguinal hernia. Now, lateral and ab lateral to the, has uh, to the Hasselbeck triangle or the inferior epigastric vessel, and above the inguinal ligament, this is the location of the indirect inguinal hernia. Femoral hernia typically it's uh, uh, it's uh, below the inguinal ligament and uh, and lateral to the pubic tubercle. The bear in mind the inguinal uh, hernia. This is the this is the neck the neck of the hernia, but it can descend all the way to the scrotum. So the tip of the hernia here can be reaching the scrotum and can be medial to the uh, pubic tubercle. It's a picture of a child with bilateral inguinal scrotal swelling, typical of uh, inguinal, bilateral inguinal hernia. This is unilateral inguinal scrotal swelling, again, inguinal hernia. This is bilateral inguinal hernia, usually associated with hydrocele in these uh, little infants. Uh, complication of inguinal hernia if left untreated, incarceration, strangulation, and bowel obstruction. Uh, Incarceration where the inguinal hernia is stuck and cannot be reduced. Strangulation is a, a later uh, a complication where there is compromise to the blood supply of the content of the hernia. And bowel obstruction, uh, if the content is, is bowel and it's become uh, kinked and obstructed as part of the incarceration process. Uh, treatment for inguinal hernia is uh, herniotomy within two to four weeks in pediatrics because the risk of complication is, is significantly higher than the adult population. So we recommend the treatment within two to four weeks. Uh, this is a picture of a child with bowel obstruction secondary to inguinal hernia. This is a picture of a child who presented with acute pain in the inguinal and scrotal area found to be an incarcerated inguinal hernia. In the ER, uh, typically we try to reduce them if there is no sign of uh, ischemia such as uh, uh, fever, uh, duration more than six hours, 
or uh, sign of uh, ischemia by uh, redness and uh, and uh, crepitus. Again, uh, in incarcerated guanine hernia or strangulated is considered as a surgical emergency. Uh, in pediatric, we typically try to reduce it in the ER uh, manually. Uh, if the reduction was completed or was successful, then we repair it urgently within two, week, uh, two days. Uh, if the reduction failed, then we explore them and repair them uh, emergency uh, within uh, one or two hours. It's a picture of open repair of uh, an inguinal hernia through uh, uh, inguinal incision. The other, uh, the other way is laparoscopic repair through uh, uh, laparoscopy. Now, hydrocyl can be classified into communicating hydrocyl or non-communicating hydrocyl. Uh, the communicating hydrocyl is because of patent uh, brussels vaginalis, the one that we described earlier. But the opening is small enough to allow only fluid, but not bowel and other intraabdominal con content. Uh, Non-communicating hydrocyl can be vaginal hydrocyl or encysted hydrocyl. This is a picture of the normal uh, 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 normal inguinal area. This is the scrotum. Usually there is a small amount of fluid in all the kids uh, after they are born. Uh, Non-communicating hydrocyl, they have hydrocyl only around the, the testicle and can be tested by t positive transillumination. Uh, communicating hydrocele, they, they, uh, they fluctuate in size between the day and night. When the kid is standing at the end of the day, uh, it's become bigger uh, in the morning because the kid is sleeping and uh, lining on his back, the swelling will be less. Insisted hydrocele does not fluctuate. It can be usually in the inguinal uh, area uh, along the cord. We call it uh, insisted hydrocele of the cord. What's the treatment? Communicating hydrocyl, we treat them as inguinal hernia. So repair them, because if we lift them, they will develop hernia and then you have to treat them anyway. Non-communicating hydrocyl, we can observe them for uh, up to the age of 12 months. If they persist, then we, it depends if it's getting bigger, then we operate at age of 12 months. If it is getting smaller, we can watch them for another 12 months to the age of 24 months and then repair them if they persist. Uh, the other thing is undescended testis or uh, cryptocordism. It's actually one of the most common uh, things we see in the in pediatric population. About one uh, to four percent of all full-term uh, newborns they have undescended testis. Uh, on the other hand, preterm uh, newborns about forty percent of them they have undescended testis. Uh, classification we can classify them to bulbable about 80% of cases and in Balba where you cannot feel the testis in about 20% of cases. Uh, Balba will test us. Uh, they can be uh, inguinal, they can be uh, femoral, they can be uh, 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 peripubic, they can be in the superficial inguinal pouch, they can be perineal, uh, they can go to the contralateral side as well. Uh, they can be along the inguinal canal or abdominal. So all these are possible sites for, uh, for undescended testis. When you examine the patient, you try to, f uh, to look in the abdominal wall, not only in the, in the, in the site where the testis is, is not present, but even the uh, opposite site, Al along the inguinal canal, along the superficial inguinal pouch, the femoral, uh, the femoral area, perineal area, and as we said, the abdominal wall as well. Um, and this in the testis, we can observe them up to the age of six months. If they still undescended or they, they did not reach the scrotum and, uh, and they are palpable, just make sure they are not retractile testis. Retractile testis, where the testis can be pulled into the uh, scrotum and you can leave it there uh, for like uh, they can stay there uh, after you leave them for about 10 seconds this is definition of retractile testis if you cannot pull it down to the scrotum or once you, they reach the scrotum they will uh, go up again it's not retractile testis by definition anyway so if the patient has palpable testis 
and still undescended by the age of six months, we recommend uh, orcubixin. The age, uh, the, the best age of uh, orcubixin is just before the age of 12 months. So between nine and 12 months is, is appropriate. How we do the orcubixin? Uh, usually for the bubble one, through a guanyl incision, you expose the testis, mobilize it from the um, uh, all the attachment you repair the inguinal hernia usually there is associated uh, indirect inguinal hernia you repair the inguinal hernia and that will give you length in the and the blood vessels and the vase then you create a uh, extra datal pouch in the uh, ipsilateral side of the scrotum then you create uh, a passage where you put the testis down to the extra datal pouch and you fix it there This can be done as a day procedure. On the other hand, if the testis is impalpable, which is about 20% of cases, the differential diagnosis of undescended testis can be intra-abdominal, or it can be inguinal, but it's too small to be felt because they are atrophied or they are small for any other reason, or vanishing testis due to intrauterine torsion or accident or ischemia or testicular agenesis where there is no testis from the very beginning. Uh, after physical examination, we typically image those patients using ultrasound. MRI can be selectively done, but not always because it needs GA. And uh, if you're gonna put the patient under GA, might as well book him for diagnostic laparoscopy, which can be diagnostic and therapeutic at the same time. So in Bible of testis, we do ultrasound, maybe MRI, but typically we book them for diagnostic laparoscopy. What do you see in diagnostic laparoscopy? You put the scope inside the abdomen and try to find the testis. You follow the vas difference, and the vas difference will, will lead you to the, to the testis inside the abdomen, should it be there. And then we measure if you can pull it as single stage procedure, or if it is too short, then we do it a two stage procedure. This is an example of uh, uh, intra-abdominal uh, finding uh, of intra-abdominal uh, testis. This is where the testis is just at the level of the uh, deep ring, just proximal to the deep ring, where it can be pulled and can be done as one stage procedure. This is where the uh, the vast difference is going and reaching an area where there is no testis. So this is a vanishing testis, where torsion probably happened here and the testis disappeared. This is where the vast difference is reaching the deep ring and going inside. So in this patient, actually the testis made it through the deep ring into the uh, inguinal canal, and maybe it's inside the inguinal canal. In this patient, we explore the inguinal uh, canal and looking for the testis, whether it's small testis or vanished testis in that area. Differential diagnosis of acute uh, painful scrotum, testicular torsion, is the first thing that you have to rule out. Orchitis or inflammation of the testis, epididymitis, inflammation of the epididymis, uh, incarcerated or strangulated in guanyl hernia, torsion of the appendix testis, or testicular trauma. Now, in this picture, we can see um, the, ba the baby was, or the patient was uh, having pain in the left, in the, in the scrotum. As you can see, the left testis is higher and transverse uh, in transverse uh, uh, manner. Uh, this is suggestive of testicular torsion. Usually this is very tender, you cannot feel it, which is again typical testicular torsion. Why testicular torsion happen? Uh, because of, uh, of uh, deformity of the testicular mesentery. This is the normal testicle, where there is, uh, the mesentery is very short, does not allow it to twist. This is called bill clabber deformity, where the testicular uh, mesentery is long and there is enough mobility of the, in, of the testicle inside the tunica vaginalis to allow it to tort around itself and causing testicular torsion. Usually this deformity is bilateral, not only one side. If it is there, usually both testis. Dobra ultrasound uh, can be helpful. Uh, if you have time, you don't want to postpone the treatment or the surgical consultation to do an ultrasound, but you can do it. And you can see there is a poor perfusion of the testis uh, that's affected. 
if you suspect testicular torsion, call the, the surgeon uh, looking after the patient to explore them and prevent testicular uh, uh, necrosis. This is uh, delayed treatment of testicular torsion. The, at time of ex exploration, the testicle is already dead. So there's nothing you can do about it. Versus this patient was explored early, the testicle is still viable. So you untwist it and then you fix it first to prevent uh, further torsion. And you explore the contralateral side and uh, because it's bilateral, as we said, and you do uh, uh, orthopexy of the contralateral side as well. So both testes has to be uh, fixed to uh, or bixi to prevent uh, torsion. So once suspected, then uh, consult the surgeon and the surgeon will explore the patient. The duration about six hours. If you don't go in and intervene within six hours, the patient will lose the testes. Uh, reduction of the testicular torsion, a viable or cubexy versus orchiectomy if not viable. More importantly, don't forget to orchiectomy the contralateral side to prevent torsion in the future if this is, if testicular torsion was the real reason. Uh, I hope this is informative. Thank you very much for listening. Take care.